Hi, Tom here from Green Engine Recording. I was having some noise problems in the studio while reamping some guitars, and I found one of the main things contributing to it were these Woolwalk power supplies. So here's a video that could help you remove the headache of power noise in your studio. Woolworts emit stray electromagnetic flux, and while this affects unbalanced cables worse, like the ones guitars and pedals use, it was also seeping into balanced XLR cables that I have. If you're trying to work out if you're getting noise from a wall wart, the difference between the two types of warts, as far as interference, is unshield transformer warts, which will introduce low frequency hum, usually double the line frequency, so if you have a power line of 60 Hz, you'll hear a hum of 120 Hz, and with a 50 Hz line, the hum will be at 100 Hz, and switcher warts, which can produce radio frequency hash that can be induced into nearby unbalanced lines and detected like a crystal set in the semiconductors of your equipment. Here it's all about harmonics. So what can we do when the equipment we want to use relies on a wall wart? Well, you could throw it away, but that's not really very practical, and you probably want to use the gear. Well, as a guitar player, I use power banks to power my pedals, and these often provide between 4 and 18 volts, the same kind of voltage a wall wart supplies. So I thought, aha, there's something here. But there are lots of different power banks available, so what should you choose? First, check the back of your gear, or failing that, the wall wart connected to it, to see what voltage and how many amps it requires. I needed both 9 and 12 volt outputs. In addition to making sure it can provide the right voltages and enough milliamps, it's a good idea to get one with isolated outputs. Why? Well, an isolated power supply lowers the capacitive load on the power rails and stops dirty power being shared between devices, which in turn means less chance of noise. I chose this one from Harley Benton, as you can adjust the voltage on different outputs, it provided 500 milliamps on each output, and crucially, it wasn't powered by its own wall wart, which would really defeat the point. Power bricks are made for guitar pedals, which generally run on 9 volt DC power, so what do you do if something you want to power says AC on it? Then you can simply cut a lead and switch the positive and the neutral like this. You might also come up against the problem where the device you want to power requires more amps than your power brick can provide. Then a cable like this ampage combiner from Rockboard, no, not the voltage combiner they sell, which will blow up your gear, could be the solution. Now you can throw all those warts in the trash, or rather recycle them, and hopefully enjoy cleaner audio in your studio. Happy gigging.